Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper. Just a reminder, this video is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Here's a list of some of the other videos that you might want to view. You can find my books on Amazon, or you can visit my website to find out about scheduling a speaking engagement. Now here's today's video. Today's video is about making good decisions or maybe even great decisions. So I'm going to share some practical strategies of how to get better at making good, great decisions, and then some spiritual strategies that are also available to help you as you navigate life. So first let's look at the practical strategies that help us make the best decisions possible. And for now, let's talk about if a person is weighing some job options. So number one, you might want to write down what the different options are. So if a person is thinking about looking for a new job, they might want to write down what different areas they're skilled at or would like to break into. Secondly, you want to get information about those options. Uh, where there's things available, uh, maybe talk to someone who can give you some more information or steer you a little bit to give you more understanding of what you might be interested in, what you might want to watch out for. So you want to get additional information as you examine your options. Then it's useful to write down the pluses and minuses of the various options that you're looking at. For example, staying in the job you're at, you could write down the benefits and the negative. Looking for a new job, you could write down, again, the benefits and the negatives, such as if you have to drive farther, um, if it's some skills that you're a little bit rusty at. So you want to weigh those the pluses and minuses of each option. Then you also want to make sure that you take time to weigh the options. If we make quick decisions out of fear or out of anger or just um, anxiety, that we don't make the best decisions when we're rushed. So this is about making purchases. You might want to keep that in mind too. Uh, if you have if you don't have good sales resistance, keep asking for time. Uh, you also want to keep looking at, are these options consistent with your goals, consistent with your values? If your goal is to make more money, but you're looking at a job that maybe is more fun, but not going to advance you, then maybe you want to keep looking. That's just a simple example. Or if it asks you to, to uh, take time away from family or relationships or demand a lot of travel, if that's inconsistent with your goals and values for this time in your life, then that will help you, that will help you determine whether something is a good door for you to go through or whether maybe it's not a good fit for you. And I encourage people to be honest about their motives. Uh, when you've made similar decisions in the past, what kinds, of, what kinds of things have you done that have turned out well? And what kinds of decisions have you done that have gone poorly? For example, a simple idea is if you let someone else talk you into a decision, there's a good chance you won't be happy with it in the long run. Another example is if you have made impulsive decisions based on something you wanted, like a purchase, and you regret it later or you can't afford it. So if we're honest with ourselves about what kinds of patterns we've had in our decision making, um, that might help us do something a little bit different and maybe a little bit more effective as we navigate life. So try to be honest with yourself about your motives for making a particular decision, making a particular change, or not making a particular change. If we tend to do the opposite of what a certain person tells us, even though they tend to be right, um, 
maybe you want to reevaluate that. And then um, think about how well you tolerate risk. Now, it's tricky because if, you, if we take absolutely no risks in life, there's really not going to be any growth. But if we take risks that are really not very calculated, not very practical, uh, then that can be sort of reckless. And so I don't think there's a magic formula for that. But if you're the kind of person who takes a lot of risks and tend to regret it, you might want to ratchet that back. Have somebody, you know, kind of help you with that. And if you tend to take no risks, then you're going to be bored and frustrated. And so we want to be very careful and reasonable in um, making some movement that hopefully most decisions we can reevaluate in a short amount of time. We're not stuck in that most decisions the rest of our lives. Most decisions are not irreversible. So that's good to remember. So here are some of the principles to follow if you want spiritual assistance from God as you make decisions, for his wisdom and discernment as you make decisions. So first of all, you still follow all the practical strategies that were mentioned before. You, you don't throw out your brain <laughs> to get God's help. Uh, you still use it. But then secondly, you want to lean into Jesus in your daily life. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And so we can actually learn to discern the voice of Jesus in our spirits. It's not weird or spooky, but as we cultivate our relationship with Jesus through reading the word, through praying, we'll begin to sense impressions in our spirit that, for me, they're always better than what I would have come up with, and they're more creative than what I could come up with. Now, some people look for signs from God. I'm a little bit wary about that because um, a lot of people who look for signs and think they got a sign, it ends up that that was not from God and it didn't go well. And we are told in the Bible to test the spirits. So I'm not real big into signs. I think it's much more reasonable to cultivate your relationship with Jesus, read the Bible, and pray. Um... I mentioned many times that God speaks to us through the Word of God, through the people of God, and through the Spirit of God. And so as you cultivate your relationship, you will begin to sense more and more when God is speaking to you. And He will confirm it usually through some other methods. So that's one way to draw on your spiritual life to improve your decision making. Now I have a, a short video on how to read the Bible, but very simply, um, a few minutes each day, just build some consistency, and you can ask God to speak to you and, uh, as you start to read, and then you only need to read maybe five or ten minutes, and you might want to use the method where you um, kind of watch for if this passage is saying something about God. If this passage is saying something about me or if it's just stating a truth but there are different simple ways we can start reading the Bible and some people keep a journal and make little notes now there are principles that um, are true throughout the Bible and as you read the Bible you will learn the mind of God and how how he sees things, which isn't how we see things. But besides the principles that are true for everyone, the Bible teaches that God has a plan for your life that's unique and personalized for you. And he can show you the path of life. This is one thing I pray for myself when I'm um, making some decisions. I ask him to show me the path of life. That's Psalm 1611. And we can also ask him to open doors that no man can close and to close doors that no man can open when we're making a decision. And that comes from Revelation, but also some other places in the Bible. Now, as we develop this lifestyle of leaning into Jesus for wisdom and direction in all of our um, aspects of living, the benefits are 
I mean, we can do things our, ourselves, but the benefits are for, for one thing, God can see way farther down the road than I can. And so I would definitely like his input because he knows better what will work and what won't in the long run. But also there's a level of peace that we can experience when we know that we have done everything that we can do and we're following the path that God has shown us to the best of our ability. There's a level of peace and less regret as we navigate life and make our decisions. So as you cultivate that daily relationship and abiding in Jesus, also over time, you will develop a a deeper understanding of God and connection with him. Any relationship as we cultivate it gets deeper over time. And this is where we can acquire wisdom and know truth in our innermost being, it says in Psalms, where we can develop greater understanding of, of our motives as well as the motives of other people and understand the plans and purposes of God in, in a deeper um more significant level and also it helps us begin to discern good from evil the bible warns us that even believers can be deceived and so it's important to know god's word and to be leaning into him and then some because you know all the glitters is not gold so we want to be able to tell the difference between something that looks good but is bad and something that is good and good for us. So even if you've messed up in the past and gotten off the path, or, you know, there have been times in my life where I thought I was following God and I found out the hard way I was not, uh, there's still forgiveness and redemption. And I'm going to have some slides of some other videos if that's something you want to look into more. So those are the practical and basic spiritual principles for making great decisions. So um, we're still human, we'll still make mistakes, but uh, let me pray for you since you're probably trying to make a decision. Lord, I ask you to keep drawing this person to yourself. Let them know that you love them and want them to succeed, that you have good plans for them. I ask you, Lord, to be speaking to this person when they open the Bible, when they pray, when they seek you, and guide them in the path of life that you have designed for them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're having any thoughts of harming yourself or others, or if this material has triggered you, please contact your doctor or a mental health therapist to assist you with what's happening. If you liked this video, you can check out my other videos on YouTube. You can find my brand new workbook on Amazon, along with the other three books that I've published. Or you can visit my website to schedule a speaking engagement. Thanks for listening.